Yeah, you, the environmentalist and earth lover who's with me on this mission to help protect our planet and slow climate change and do all the things. While we're here sitting, trying to do our best, I think there's something that we've forgotten. We keep focusing on the now. Only riding your bike, not flying, buying secondhand clothes is not the solution. It is not enough to stop emitting carbon dioxide. The truth is that carbon dioxide, even if we stop right now, is still remaining in our atmosphere and is still going to cause climate change in the next hundred thousands of years coming up. The rate of climate change and the severity, now that is where we're in charge. The fallacy is, in just four years, carbon dioxide would be out of our atmosphere and we'd be free to continue living life as normal. But the truth is, we've already begun an irreversible change of our planet. So what is actually happening on our planet? We have climate change models which give us some idea of what we may expect. Unfortunately, due to model uncertainty, scenario uncertainty, internal variability in the short term, we don't exactly know what is going to happen with our climate. The four biggest pathways that we are assuming we could be going to um, from now are all showing an upwards trajectory of carbon emission, temperature rise, and therefore global impacts. Even the best case scenario where we basically minimize our carbon emissions to an absolute maximum, and that's quite unrealistic, we have begun a journey down a path of changing the world. The future of climate is going to see global consequences including surface temperature rise, sea level rise, basically what the pros said, the wetter parts of our world are going to become wetter and the drier parts of our world are going to become drier. So we're going to see more extreme climate events wherever we are on the planet. It is also possible that we are moving towards, if not have already reached certain tipping points. Tipping points are a kind of change in our planet and our climate um, that we can't move back towards. So even once we have gone over this hump, there are things that we have started we can no longer stop. These tipping points include ice collapse on the poles as well as melting of the permafrost. What happens when we melt the permafrost, which is on the far north pole, the very hard icy tundra, we're gonna see an abrupt increase in carbon-2 emissions through the thawing of these carbon-rich permafrost, causing additional greenhouse gas release. Now this is just gonna be fed back into the loop, causing climate change to keep going and go back to the point of no return. The next thing is tipping points include biosphere shifts. Ocean heat waves have led to mass coral bleachings and to the loss of half of the shallow water corals on the Australia's Great Barrier Reef. A staggering 99% of tropical corals are projected to be lost if global average temperatures rise above 2 degrees. And this is because of ocean warming, ocean acidification, and pollution all working together. It's going to impact not only the marine biodiversity, but also the millions of people who depend on our oceans, especially our coral reefs, to survive and live. The biosphere shifts are also going to shift boreal forest, an expansion of the tundra to the north and a die in the south. The Amazon is going to be continuing to die off, deforest, which is further going to send even more carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Because as we cut down trees, we are losing one of the key sequesters of carbon dioxide, one of the key natural sequesterers. The next kind of tipping point that may happen is circulation change. But scientists theorize that the West African monsoon shift can cause global changes in climate, in weather, eventually leading to climate, and the ocean circulation in the North Atlantic, known as the Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation, has been slowing because of the meltwater from Greenland entering the oceans. As well, the cooling of the surface waters in North Atlantic has been detected, and there's evidence that the Gulf Stream has since slowed from the 1950s. This is going to change a whole heap of things from the movement of the marine animals, those who can move and can travel, but also the spreading of plankton and nutrients and cold and warm waters, which then impacts the weather and climate even further. <sighs> Look, what we need to do is focus on our natural and artificial sinks to not only stop emitting carbon dioxide, but also bring some of the carbon dioxide that's already been emitted and will continue to be emitted because of this process that we have started and improve it. Natural carbon sinks include plants, the soil, and oceans. 
grasslands, agricultural lands, peat bogs, freshwater lakes, and coastal ecosystems, and coral reefs are all natural carbon sinks. However, there are also options of creating artificial sinks. Some of these sinks include capturing CO2 and storing it by injection into the ocean. We can also replicate the natural process of mineral carbonization that uses CO2 to transform natural minerals into carbonate rocks like limestone. But that's not all. We can also stimulate the growth of microorganisms in the southern oceans by fertilizing the surface with iron. Nature-based solutions, however, are the things that you can do from your home. Probably the easiest, as well as voting for a greener and cleaner future, so sign up to vote. So join me in this. Let's take part in reforestation projects, creating new forests, improve soil conservation by supporting regenerative agricultural farming. Let's realize that there's more that we need to be doing than just stopping carbon emissions, but also getting that carbon back to where it's supposed to be to hopefully minimize the projections of change in temperature ocean warming, sea, sea level rise, and all that. Thank you so much for watching. All the references are down below for you guys to check out. Thanks.